productivity is at the heart of the vegetable garden. But have you actually ever stopped to look at just how attractive vegetables can be? Here, we've got beetroot bolt hardy, a classic. But just look at those lovely blood red stems and green leaves, fantastic. And then in front, we've got bright light Swiss chard with yellow stems, white stems, and orange stems, a real technicolor dream coat of a plant. So, if we think about veg like this, there is a world of planting opportunities. Your garden should of course be a beautiful retreat, a space to relax, to entertain. So if you think you haven't got room for a veg plot, think again. This border is as far from the traditional veg patch as you can get. Everything here is edible, but you'll notice there's no straight lines and everything has been carefully arranged with height, form, texture and colour in mind. Planting design principles which you traditionally apply to the flower border. But I guarantee that when this lot fills out, you really will see the, the planning that's gone into this scheme, those wonderful colours, those wonderful textures working beautifully together. When thinking of structuring your border, start high, the plants that will tower above all the others. And being an island bed, I'm positioning height in the middle of the border rather than concentrating it all towards the back. Well, because there is no back. Now here, I'm planting a runner bean called White Lady. Most runner beans have a scarlet flower, which in itself is attractive, but this one has ice white. Just like a clematis or honeysuckle, these beans will climb their way up these supports and create a fantastic display of colour. There we go. But white flowered runner beans isn't the only climber that I've got in this border. Next door, going up that metal obelisk, is a Bellotti bean, and this one has got pink and white pods. And then last, but definitely not least, growing up my woven willow obelisk, I've got a climbing French bean called Purple TP, and yes, you've guessed it, it's got purple pods. Throughout the border, I'm planting these, one of my, my favourite vegetables. This is a globe artichoke. It may not look like much now, but this plant is a whopper and grows to a towering two metres or more, and it has these huge, jagged, silvery leaves. For the next layer down, you want some mid-height plants. I have to point this one out to you because broad beans are one of my favourite veg and sautéed in butter, oh, absolutely delicious. This variety is called Crimson and it's easy to see why because it's got these gorgeous flowers which are scarlet pink, an absolute cracker. And I've planted it in a, in a drift like this, A, so that we get to appreciate those flowers en masse, but also so it's easier to pick. This one at the back here is called Spinach Ready. And if you look at those lovely blood red stems, it's easy to see why. It's a real quick cropper, and you can imagine taking, taking off those leaves to pep up any salad. Instead of bedding begonias or petunias, why not pop in things like this for great ground cover interest? First up, frilly lettuce lolo rosso with those gorgeous red leaves. Next to it, onion red barren. And yes, you've guessed it, it's a bulb, which is red. I've got cornflower, black ball, where the flowers are edible. And in between these, putting this purple basil. Basil is difficult to germinate, or at least I find it is. So I like using plug plants or pack plants like this. We are so used to sowing vegetables, not focusing on their cropping potential. But thinking of them this way is really liberating. When you look at them like this, one starts to realise that with so many different textures, forms and colours, they make an amazing display and in fact could occupy space within the normal flower border. In fact, when you do look at them, it seems almost a shame to get in there and harvest them. 